Today is um, a Van de Rothko study day in which we're looking at a series of murals Mark Rothko painted for Harvard in the early 60s that became damaged over time. They've not been shown for quite a while and we created an exhibition here at the museums in which we are showing them again and showing them in the, in the context of a kind of propositional structure of using an innovative new conservation tool in which light is projected on the murals which approximates the original colors of the paintings. Today's study day, we are talking about how does this projection tool work? What are the implications for this in art going forward? Um, is it something that will become more commonly used? Does it cross a line? Do we want to allow the object to change and hold on to its kind of aging process? Or do we want to try to bring it back to where it began? And is that something we should do? And is the artist to say that? Are we the, the conservators in a museum? And really having a kind of meaty discussion about the implications of this kind of conservation with modern contemporary art. In the case of the projected light, if we agree that it's a, it's a simulation and therefore an illusion and a form of, of deceit, then, um, then normalizing that over time is, is a big risk. Yes, I, and I think if that is your point of view, that it's a form of deceit. So, well, I, I think mean, it, I think this is, is I, you agree, yeah. maybe we can never get away from the academic, but then have these, you know, the, the artist's intention of these works been lost forever. Well, I mean, some never things. be exhibited without an academic discussion. Some I mean, things, I, some things get lost. In 1988, when they were shown, people came in and go, yep, they're no longer red, they're blue, and walked out. So that was the sense that they had been written as, as, as a loss. That was the publicity. And so my question is, when does a damaged painting not elicit some kind of response like that? Is that not what we do as conservators? We try to minimize that distraction so that you can see it all and maybe We've taken a stand here that's, uh, we have taken a stand here that's different, but isn't that what we're trying to do to prevent all of those kinds of responses? If all of the visual objections were uh, removed, if somehow this, we, we could all agree, and even the artists could agree that it was done perfectly, um, that would make the ethical objection maybe all the more strong because then the deception has been total. Because of the vulnerability of these surfaces, it's actually impossible to restore the color in a conventional way by adding conservation material to the surface. So we couldn't do that. On the other hand, it's such an important cycle, important to the university, important to Roscoe's work, to American art in the 20th century. We felt strongly which we should we should really try to find a treatment possibility. I mean, the reason we're doing this study day is because it really is something that is not an automatic um, kind of tool that should be adapted. It's, it's experimental. It's, it's something that the, there are questions by conservators, by curators, by art historians, by scholars, and by artists about what is the role of conservation with works of art as they begin to change with time. So it's really the reason for the study day is have that kind of discussion between experts.